I have been waiting a very long time for this day. We can now purchase affordable 32-bit controllers for our 3D printers. This one here, only 20 bucks, which is price parity with most 8-bit controllers. Let's check it out. Opening your box, we have the 32-bit controller in an anti-static bag. It also comes with quite a short USB cable and a pack of spare jumpers. Here we have the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.3 board. This will be a one-to-one -one replacement to my existing 8-bit controller, the good old Arduino Mega 2560, and the Ramps 1.4 Shield. On the SKR board, we have similar features to my existing board. Start off with, we have five step stick slots, an expansion for LCD and SD card, six end stop inputs, three thermistor inputs, USB, 12 to 24 volt DC input, a PWM controlled heat bed output, dual PWM controlled hot end heater outputs, and a PWM controlled uh, cooling fan output. That is actually one more PWM uh, MOSFET output than the RAMPS board has. There is also a micro SD card slot supplied with a 128 megabyte micro SD card pre-installed with Marlin 2.0 firmware. The 32-bit microcontroller chip is an NXP semiconductor LPC1768. It incorporates an ARM Cortex M3 processor running at 100 MHz, 512 k of flash in a 100-pin LQFP package. On DigiKey, it retails from $11.70 per unit. Or at LCSC, it costs only $5.12 per unit and under $4 in bulk. The PWM MOSFET for the heat bed is a Winsock WSK220N04. Rated at up to 40 volts, 220 amps current, and a measly 2.5 milliohm drain to source resistance. That should translate to very little heat wasted within the MOSFET for powering our current hungry heat beds. The PWM MOSFETs for the hot ends and cooling fan are Winsock WSF3085. Rated up to 30 volts, 85 amps current, and a 4.5 milliohm drain to source resistance. No heat sinks were supplied with the MOSFETs, but as they're surface mount onto the PCB, they are heat sunk to the top and underneath the PCB. Besides the expected 32-bit benefits of faster print speeds without slowdowns or stuttering when compared to 8-bit boards, the SKR version 1.3 has a few quality of life improvements. Replaceable fuses on the input, the 20 amp fuse for the heated bed, and the 10 amp fuse for the three other PWM controlled outputs. Upgrade the firmware via the SD card. Simply drag and drop your firmware onto this as it appears as another drive when connected to your PC via the USB port. The usual jumpers to set the micro stepping for the step driver sticks, plus jumpers for TMC's UART and SPI modes, and sensorless homing. So you don't need to run jumper wires all over the board to use those step drivers. Big Tree Tech have done a decent job with their instruction manual, although in Chinglish is available from their website. Building a fresh copy of Marlin 2.0 is a bit different than with the 8-bit boards, as we won't be using the Arduino IDE. Download Marlin 2.0 bug fix from the Marlin website and unzip it. Download Microsoft's Visual Studio code and install it on your PC. Then under Extensions, search for Platform I.O. and press Install. Finally, within Platform I.O., press Open Project, navigate to the Marlin 2.0 unzipped folder and press Open Marlin Bug Fix 2.0. On the left hand tree, select platformio.ini. Change the variable env underscore default to lpc1768. On the left file tree, select configuration.h. Set serial underscore port to 0, serial underscore port 2, 
to minus 1, board rate to 115200. Set motherboard to board underscore big tree underscore skr underscore v13. The rest of the variables in configuration.h can be copied from your existing Marlin 1.1.9 configuration.h. You can find a copy of my configuration.h file in the Hypercube Thingiverse page, linked below. Once you're finished making modifications to the config, press the tick symbol along the bottom left. This will build the firmware. It is saved in the Marlin folder under PIO ENVS backslash LPC 1768 and called firmware.bin. When you connect your SKR board to your PC for the first time, Windows will install the drivers. For me, it found the drivers automatically, but if yours doesn't, check the Big Tree Tech instruction manual to manually download the drivers. In Windows, the micro SD card appears as another drive. You'll see a single file in there called firmware.cur or current. Copy over your freshly built firmware.bin file into this drive. No need to delete the existing file. Upon next reboot of the SKR board, it will flash a copy of the new firmware onto itself. Alternatively, in the platform io.ini file, add variable upload underscore port equals your micro SD drive letter. This will allow building and copying of the firmware.bin file in one step by pressing the arrow button. A couple of things I will point out that will make your life a bit easier when configuring this board. By default, the part cooling fan is associated with this uh, two pin JST XH connection here. Unlike the screw terminal that I've been using on my RAMS board. If you need to use the screw terminal for the cooling fan, like me, then go to the pins folder, open pins underscore big tree underscore skr version 1.3.h file, search for fan, and swap over the pin assignment between fan underscore pin and fan one underscore pin. I use an induction sensor for bed homing, but it didn't work on this board. The reason? Big Tree Tech have decided to install 10k ohm pull up resistors on all the end stop inputs. This means the pull up and pull down options in configuration.h do nothing. I had to physically remove the resistor marked R11 from the board before my induction sensor would trigger correctly. Big Tree Tech, if you're watching this, please omit these pull up resistors or at the very least add another jumper to the Z min. Uh, end stop to make installation of induction sensors much easier. For mounting this board onto 2020 aluminium extrusion, I've designed a 3D printable mount for this with cable management for excess cable length. You'll need three M3x10 screws and three M3 hex nuts to attach the board to the mount and three M5 by 10 millimeter screws and three M5 hammer nuts to attach the mount to the 2020 aluminium extrusion. As always, my designs are available for free on Thingiverse, links below. This board uses JST XH sockets for all the external connections, whilst the RAM board had pin headers. That's fine, you can connect your existing DuPont style connectors into the JST XH sockets as they both share the same 2.5mm pin pitch. Of course, you can recrimp all of your cables to the JST XH plug with kits available online. For the stepper motor drivers, I'll be reusing the same step sticks from my previous ramps board. For the X and Y motors, I'll be using TMC2100 step drivers set to 16 micro steps on the jumpers. And for the Z axis and the extruder, I'll be using the 4988 step drivers also set to 16 micro steps on the jumpers. The jumpers underneath are the same as the ramps board. And here it is, installed and wired up to my Hypercube 3D printer. Just need to install the 12 volt power now. Before you start printing, you have to check if everything is wired up correctly. Starting with the end stops, in Prontoface, send command M119. 
All end stops should show open. Then press and hold the X end stop. Send command M119 again. It should say triggered. Same with the Y end stop. And Z end stop. If you need to invert the output, do so in configuration.h. Next we'll check the motor directions. We'll start by centering the X carriage, lower the bed and send command G91 and M211S0. To check the X motor, send command G1X10Y10. The X carriage should move diagonally back. If it moves forward, rotate the motor connector or invert the motor direction in configuration.h. To check the Y motor, send command G1X-10, Y10. The X carriage should move diagonally back. If it moves forward, rotate the motor connector or invert the motor direction in configuration.h. To check the Z motor, send command G1Z10. The bed should move down. If it moves up, rotate the motor connector or invert the motor direction in configuration.h. Next we'll check the cooling fan, send command M106 to turn it on and M107 to turn it off. Ensure both hot end and bed temperatures are shown on the screen or in Pronterface. Then set the hot end to 200 degrees C and bed to 80 degrees C. While I have the heat bed turned on to 80 degrees Celsius, I'm just putting my finger on the heat bed PWM MOSFET and it is only just a bit warmer than room temperature. Yeah, so no heat sink required on that MOSFET, which is a far cry from the MOSFET on the ramps board, which used to overheat very quickly. And here is the Gecko, printed at 60 millimeters per second over USB. And straight away I noticed the motors sounded much smoother as it was printing this particular piece. And while it was printing, I didn't notice any slowdowns or stuttering of the printhead. I am really happy with this. It wasn't all rosy though. I did encounter a layer shift and you can clearly see it approximately a third of the way out printing this gecko. That could be because the X or Y driver overheated or not enough current was delivered to the motors at this print speed. Either way, I may have to add a cooling fan to my step drivers to rectify this. I'm so glad these affordable 32-bit controllers are now becoming available. There really is no reason not to use 32 boards at these prices. I'll be following this video up with a 32-bit print speed test and comparing the 8-bit board to the new 32-bit board. Subscribe to be notified when that video goes live. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave your comments, and I'll catch you next time.